What's going on, people? Question of the day. Are you really, really happy? That's something I want you to think about. We're going to chop it up in a second. Another edition of the American Hustler rant. But not exactly what you think. Recent weeks, I've noticed something. And it really kind of came to me because I was watching the videos of the people who were like, I hate Google Plus. Google, it's not going to work. Give it up. And I saw these videos and I saw these people and the people were upset and stop forcing me to do this and I don't want to be part of this. And I started hearing things that I heard myself when I got in the storage auction business. Someone actually told me about the eighth month to give it up. It's like, man, that's just too much work. That's too much hassle. You know, those people, don't, you know, those white people don't like you. They're going to run you up because you're black. I heard all this stuff. Give it up, man. Find some milk. Save yourself some stress. Don't do it. And I looked and people were like, hey, don't do it. Now, this is the thing. And this is what has cracked me up. I've been on YouTube for, this is my fifth year. Entering my fifth year starting August of this year. And I've noticed that when YouTube changes something, there's this big brouhaha that's based on immediate emotion. It's not long term. It's not a revolution. It's not like what happened with Trayvon Martin. It's none of that stuff because the people are like, I hate it. You know, and someone even, and I come in on this video, someone even said, this is the death of YouTube, which is absolutely preposterous. I'm not saying YouTube couldn't be knocked off by some other company, but that other company is going to spend several hundred million to a few billion just to enter the space. There's not too many companies out there with that type of capital just laying around to take on YouTube and give you content and the ability to upload your videos for free. There's not a lot of people who are like, yeah, I'm going to do it. There's individuals with that kind of money that could probably do it, but will they? I don't think so. Doesn't make sense. So, you know, YouTube's dying. People are leaving. What's going to happen is there's going to be this culture of influencers that understand this and they will take advantage because you don't have to be able to comment to watch a video. That's the thing that cracks me up. You know, so you can't comment. Most videos have way more views than they have comments. So that's why I'm like, the end of YouTube is going away. Just crazy. And the thing that got me, and I looked at these people, and a lot of people kept saying this. I'm not happy. I'm upset. I'm not happy. I'm not happy. And I, I looked at it, and I was like, why are you happy? Speaking of myself, because when I saw it, I got happy. And it hit me. I am naturally a happy person. Sure, I go off on people on YouTube and I have friends. But 99.8% of the time, I'm pretty happy. And then I was like, let's go through these steps. Why are you pretty happy 99% of the time? Because I live a life of design. I look at the world the way it really is. I understand how the world works and I accept that and I've created my own methodology my own pathologies for my life that makes me happy 99.0% of the time so when someone else is doing something that I don't have any control over because you know YouTube is a third-party platform I'm here but I realize I don't own this I'm just here but the benefit of being here so far for me outweighs the negatives a million to one for me that's been my experience that's been my journey other people few weeks they can't deal with it the, the politics the trolls this this these changes then you know i got back to the happiness part and i was like okay why am i you know i am like thrilled that this is happening because i know that it's going to benefit me then step back step back step back there's this book and it's an old book and i recommend that you get it it's by Harvey McKay. It's called Dig Your Well Before You're Thirsty. 
when I was poor, and I'm going to define poor as going to bed hungry, needing dental work, couldn't get it, mouth throbbing, not for a day, but for months. That kind of poor, that kind of every day is a waking pain. So my perspective is much different than someone who hasn't had those experiences because, you know, many of you, simply put, you lose your mind when your cable goes out. You lose your mind when the satellite doesn't align and there's static on your uh, satellite TV. You, I'm talking throwing stuff at the television, throwing the remote on the floor, calling up your friend like, man, this is some bullshit. Man, my cable went out. I paid these motherfuckers like $200 a month. And I want, I want my cable. I want, I mean, seriously. I call that a warped perspective. <laughs> totally warped perspective. So essentially what I'm saying is that a great deal of this unhappiness and it's authentic unhappiness and it's real unhappiness is because you have people who are so comfortable that it doesn't take much to rock their world because the perspective is about that shallow. I mean, an ant couldn't backstroke in their perspective if it was a, a wading pool because it's so shallow that these little things lead people to, I don't like it. I'm not happy. I'm not happy. I'm not happy. Make me happy. And the thing is, happiness is an inside job. But going back to why I am happy 99.% of the time, I learned that the decisions that you make here today are going to have a direct correlation on what happens in the future. I went to a point in life where I was made a lot of bad decisions. I did stupid stuff. I said the wrong thing. And repercussions were like <laughs> all upside the head. So the happiness that you experience today or the angst or the unhappiness frequently stems from what you did or did not do in the past. And I'm looking at this whole thing because I created this channel. And for those of you who've been here a while, you know the deal. This channel was created to sell products, to sell my books. That was the only reason that I did it. So for me, it's a wonderful thing. The, the friendships I've developed, the great experiences, that was like gravy and icing you know that extra stuff with the meal because the main meal was to present myself and to move product and for a lot of people they get all bent out of shape it's like man that's what's wrong with the world today everyone wants to make money can't people just do things just to do them to help out their fellow man and every time i hear someone saying that and i challenge them if i'm able to these people actually do not follow their own advice they don't do it. They want someone else to do it, but they are not doing it. And also, I know some people who are highly altruistic. I have a friend who's an actuary that took time from her job to go to Haiti when all that devastation happened there. Okay, that's helping someone else at your own expense. Because she flew down there on her own dime. She took her vacation time to go out and help people she didn't even know. That's helping people to me. That's really putting out. And there's a lot of people in the world like that. And what's funny is I have friends like this and I talk to people like this and they know me and they don't seem to have a problem with me. But the people who are not doing those things, but once, you know, I have this thing called translation. Like when someone tells you something, I will Im immediately translate it to what it really means. And so when someone's like, you should help someone, they're really saying, you should help me. You shouldn't be like that because I need your help. But because I'm not going to humble myself because I think I don't have to because I have an entitlement mindset. I think I can shame you. I think that I can make you or I can build a correlation. People who think like me so you will change what you will do to help us because we feel that you should use your talents, your abilities, your efforts to help us. And no, you should not expect remuneration. And that is one of the reasons that a lot of people are not successful because they're looking for someone else to come into their life and make them happy, to save them, to become their personal Superman and fight all the demons and dragons of the world, which is absolutely preposterous. But many people think that way. So if you're unhappy with YouTube changes, 
I have a feeling that you're unhappy with a lot of other stuff because if your happiness bowl is overflowing, if a speck of dirt or something pops in, you're like, oh, and you move on. But if something happens and your bowl's turned up all side down and you're all unhappy and you're angst and you're just like really, really ticked, really pissed off, there's other stuff going on. Because what happens here on YouTube, unless you are just an ardent YouTuber, really? Most people don't make comments. This really is not that big of a deal. But because people have this entitlement and expectation that others should take care of them or be responsible for their happiness, it really is a big problem to those individuals. So my question to you today, are you happy are you really, really happy? Are you living the life that you want to? Are you even trying? Because happiness is a, usually a byproduct of action. Not sitting around rubbing your belly going, I'm happy. Give me some cake, baby. No. Can we get them cookie? No. It's a byproduct of accomplishment. So if you're not happy, it's probably because you ain't doing shit. Just my opinion, what's yours? All right, this is Glendon. I'll see you on the good side.